let the cost of the cross, let the reality of God's love for us sink in and hit you deep in your heart and return back to him. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus today. And this is obviously talked about a lot, mainly, mostly. The death and resurrection of Jesus is our faith. It is what Christianity is built upon. If there was no death and resurrection of Jesus, we would have nothing. <laughs> but I really just want to invite you today, not into just the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, but into a heart that is positioned to really fully grasp the love of God in this story. Jesus died for you. It's true. And it's thrown around a lot. But has that sentence lost its weight on you? Has it lost its weight in your heart? I invite you today to join me in reading these scriptures and to re-engage back with the heart of Christ and to see his deep love for us. Philippians 2, 6 through 8 says, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. This is talking about Jesus. But emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And God humbled himself to earth, to our broken world, to live and to dwell and to teach us the way and to ultimately die for us, to defeat death and to make a way from death to life that has never been done before so that you and me can enter into eternal life with him. And the reality of this is that God didn't have to do any of this, is that Jesus had no obligation to do this. It's not that he created the world and then once mankind fell, he was now stuck with us and had to figure out what to do. That's not what it was. In the beginning, God created the world and he created mankind and he created them with free will to choose him or to not choose him. He gave mankind everything. Everything was perfect and he loved us with a perfect love that we perfectly felt and knew and dwelled in. And even in that place, mankind rejected their creator and sin entered into the world. Romans 6 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so actually sin had the weight of death to it. Even the littlest sin sprang death into reality for us. And God could have given up on us right then and there, but he didn't. And the Bible is the story of God fighting for us, of God pursuing us, of God's love for us. This is the story of a God who didn't give up on us. Not because he had to keep going, not because he owed it to us at any means, not because it's fun or entertaining to him, because it's not. Sin breaks the heart of God. And, and can you imagine God creating mankind to love them and to choose them and to be with them and they reject him, their creator? It breaks his heart. Yet he loves us so deeply that he's willing to withstand that. He's willing to withstand the cost that it costs him to love us and to fight for us and to choose us. And so Jesus humbled himself onto this earth, this broken world, and lived amongst men who hated him, men who he created and knew and loved. God dwelt among them and they didn't recognize him as God. They didn't recognize their own creator. And in that, in everything Jesus encountered and lived on our earth, his heart was broken, but he stayed out of love. Even though his entire life here was full of persecution and hatred towards him and people not knowing him, he still chose to 
to go to that cross and to finish, to finish the punishment and to take it away from us. He bore all of our sin. He was a man fully and fully God at the same time. He was a man, but a man who did not sin. And so in that, when he died on that cross, death could not hold him because death was a place for sin. Death was a place for imperfection, but God was perfect. And so for the first time ever, God made a way out of death into life and allowed us and invited us to enter that with him and told us this. Romans 10, 9 through 13 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call to him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so through our faith and belief in Jesus, our hearts that believe in him, we are able to be reunited with him. And as we die, we will not enter death in the same way Jesus did not stay in death. Three days later, after Jesus died on that cross, he resurrected. He came back. Death was defeated. He was alive. He is alive to this day. He never stayed dead. He is alive and working and in love with you to this day. And as you believe in him, when you believe in him, you enter into a relationship with him again. And yes, we are promised eternal life, but everything God did isn't just to put us in this nice, cool place with golden roads and rainbows and whatever else you think heaven is like. You know, he did everything he did so that we might be with him. But the point is our relationship with him. John 17, three says, for this is eternal life that they know you, the one true God in Jesus Christ in whom you've sent. And so eternal life is to know God. And so we're not alive to be in heaven. We're alive to be in relationship with God. And so everything he did is the story of him trying to reunite us with him in his love for us so that we might love him back and be in this relationship with God, a relationship full of love. And so really what Jesus did on that cross was invite us back to him in his heart to invite us to a relationship with the one who created us, who knows us and loves us despite ourselves and loves us despite what we've done and loves us so deeply that he fights for us constantly, a God full of compassion and grace and joy. His death on the cross is not a way to guilt us into coming back into eternal life with him. It's not a guilt trip. It's not a feel so bad that you did this for me so that you have to return to me. That's not love. (laughs) That's not the point. The point is that he loved us so deeply that he did what he did. And what he wants from us is our love back, is our belief in him, is for us to understand who he is, to understand what this world is, what the point of any of this is. We're confused, we're lost, we're deceived. And he doesn't want us to stay that way. Matthew 22, 36 through 38 says, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And so the great and first commandment of God is for us to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. He could have said anything, but his heart for us is love. The Bible says that God is love. And the Bible says that love is patient 
it's kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. That love doesn't keep record of wrong, that it does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, that it always trusts, always hopes, that it always perseveres, that it never fails. God is all of these things. And so this Easter or whenever you're watching this, return your heart back to that love of God. Let the cost of the cross, let the reality of God's love for us sink in and hit you deep in your heart and return back to him. Maybe it's for the first time. Maybe it's just again. We're always called to love him more and to love him with all of us. And so we must always return to this place of sitting in the reality of the cross and sitting in the deepness of his love for us. The Bible says that we love because he loved first and that actually we didn't love God, but he loved us and gave his life as a ransom for many. And so our love comes out of God's love for us. And so it's so important for us to know how much he loves us and to really, 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 really get it and to really sit in it. And it changes our lives. I love the God who's done what he's done for me. And I'm so glad that I know him. And I'm so glad that I get to live for him and love him now and love him for eternity in a place with golden roads or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, I get to be with my God, that I get to be with Jesus. So thank you, God. Thank you for your death and your resurrection. And yeah, connect to him today and continue to connect with him for the rest of your life. Pray and ask him to, to take you into deeper places with him. And if for some reason this isn't hitting your heart, if for some reason the love of God is not piercing you, pray and ask him. Ask him to let it get through. Ask him to let it pierce your heart deeper than it's ever pierced it before. And watch how he does it and watch what he does. He wants you to know his love for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. Stick around. You can check out some of the other videos that I made. And I will see you guys soon. Happy Easter.